Okay. Good morning, everyone. Our teacher person, our lovely and our lovely presenter, and all participants, welcome to RSU Research Conference 2021 to SCI G21 Dentistry Room 1. Okay. First of all, I'd like to introduce myself. I am Song Chanok Rangsi Chanakun, and next to me, Dr. Nathakan Gaukham, we are lecturer at Faculty of Physical Therapy and Sport Medicine, Rangsi University. Today, we are the host and MC in this room. On behalf of Research Institute of Rangsi University, I'd like to extend warmest welcome everyone for giving you our present to RSU Conference 2021 today. Now, uh, for the timetable in this room, let's begin with the keynote speaker presentation by video presentation in the topic, enamel demineralization concentration of trade elements and dental carriage by Associate Professor Dr. Koji Watanabe from Division of Developmental Stomatognatics Function Side Department of Health Promotion Kyushu Dental University from Japan. And may I introduce his brief biography as follows. Associate Professor Dr. Koji Watanabe graduate from Nagasaki University School of Dentistry and complete doctoral program at Kyushu Dental College. He was lecturer at Division of Pediatric Dentistry, Department of Human Development and Fostering Megai University School of Dentistry. He is specialist and advising dentist in Japanese Society of Pediatric Dentistry. And also he certified dentist Japan Society of Pediatric Oral and Maxillofacial Surgery and Society for Disability and Oral Health. Now, uh, what's the right time I'd like to bring everyone in the presentation by Associated Professor Dr. Koji Watanabe. Please give approach. Hello everyone, good morning. Do you read me? Yeah. First of all, I thank you so much for inviting me such a wonderful conference. Oh. So, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, may I play my video presentation now? Yeah, okay. Okay, uh, so just a moment, please. I'd like to begin my presentation soon. Watanabe. Can you read me? I'd like to yeah, um, I can listen. Okay, thank you. And everyone involved for giving me such a valuable opportunity and their work for holding this conference. Today, I'll make a presentation on D and remineralization of animal. In the first part, we will discuss critical pH and biochemical and histological differences between two kinds of pathological animal demineralization. In the second part, we will browse our previous reports on the relationships between concentrations of trace elements in oral cavity and renal carrier prevalence. Now, let's begin the first part. There are two kinds of hard tissues in human body. One is bone, and the other is tooth. It's true they have some common characteristics, but they are absolutely different. The most 
distinct difference between bone to its existence or absence of turnover. Bone is remodeled by osteoblasts and osteoblasts. But tooth has no active turnover. However, animal surface is key and remineralized depending on some factors in oral cavity. In normal function, morphological factors and protective factors are balanced. As a result, mineral volume in animal is maintained. When the pathological factors overweigh the protective factors, animal will be demineralized. On the other hand, when the protective factors overweigh the pathological factors, animal will be remineralized. There are two kinds of pathological demineralization. One is general caries and the other is erosion. General caries is determined as demineralization due to bacterially derived acid production. Erosion is determined as demineralization due to non-bacterially derived acid exposure. So these pathological factors are categorized as shown here. When hydroxapatite crystal faces water, formula number one comes into effect. At this point, phosphate ions hydrolyze. So, phosphate ions replaced by this region. As a result, formula number two comes to effect. Now, when animal surface is filled by oral food, Followed by acid production or acid exposure, as shown in formula number three. Hydrogen ions bind to hydroxide ions and phosphate ions, resulting in concentration reduction in these anions. After all, chemical reaction proceed to the right direction depending on the concentration gradient. Hence, Consume ion dilute from hydrochapatite crystal. Let's consider enamel and oral food in terms of E and re mineralization. When oral fluid undersaturated with respect to hydrochapatite crystal, concentration of these ions are low. So chemical reaction proceeds to the right direction. which brings elution of the minerals. When oral fluid is oversaturated with respect to hydroxapatite crystal, concentration of these ions are high. So chemical reaction proceeds to the left direction, which brings deposition of the minerals. Please look at this picture. The particle axis shows ion activity product of hydroxyapatite crystal, and the horizontal axis shows pH. In the blue area, oral fluid is supersaturated with respect to hydroxyapatite crystal. On the other hand, in the red area, oral fluid is undersaturated with respect to hydroxyapatite crystal. Critical pH is the border between these two areas. The picture indicates that if concentrations of these ions in oral fluid are high, critical pH will be decreased. That means animal becomes hard to normalize. So let's discuss erosion first. Suppose oral fluid in physiological condition. When acid food is consumed, hydrogen ions are provided into oral food. As a result, 
pH of overall fluid decreases. The provided hydrogen ions bind to hydroxide and phosphate ions, resulting in decrease of these ion levels. And then chemical reaction progresses toward right direction. This progression is demineralization. In the process of erosion, overall fluid is so huge in amount that calcium ion level doesn't increase largely through demineralization. As a result, demineralization progresses layer by layer from the animal surface. This is a historical picture of erosion. Demineralization progressed layer by layer from the animal surface. Next, let's discuss denal carriers. Characteristics of denal carriers is the existence of biofilm. Bacteria exist in the biofilm which covers animal surface. So, oral fluid between biofilm and the animal surface is small in amount. Suppose oral fluid is in a physiological condition. When bacteria consume with glucose, they produce acid into oral fluid resulting in decrease of pH in oral fluid. The produced hydrogen ions bind to hydroxide and phosphate ions, resulting in decrease of these ion levels, and then chemical reaction progresses toward right direction. This is demineralization. Because of the calcium addition, calcium ion level in oral fluid decreases, and then chemical reaction begins to progress toward left direction. This progression is remineralization. In the process of general carriers, oral fluid is contained in a closed space made by the biofilm and the animal surface. So, calcium ion level oral fluid increases through demineralization. After the increase of the calcium ion level, oral fluid becomes supersaturated with respect to the hydroxyapatite crystal. In this phase, remineralization progresses from the animal surface to the lesion depth. As a result, subsurface lesion is formed. This is a historical picture of denal carriers. The early stage of denal carriers is found as a subsurface region. So, let's see previous reports of relationship between subface elements and denal carriers prevalence. First of all, let me explain what are trace elements. Trace elements are defined as essential elements for life action which are maintained at very low level in an organism. They account for 0.02% of human body weight. Trace elements play important roles as active centers of enzymes or bioactive substances. In this part, we will focus on copper and alumina. First report is research on the relationship between copper level side of children and denal carriers prevalence. In this field, there are two kinds of saliva. One is pure saliva and the other is mixed saliva. Mixed saliva is determined as saliva which has been already secreted in the oral cavity and fills the mouth. So it contains gingival previous fluid, elements diluted from teeth, and so on as well as ingredients of pure saliva. Mixed saliva samples were collected from elementary school children from 10 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. 527 samples were obtained, and the kappa level was measured and determined by atomic absorption spectrophotometry and the calibration curve method 
using standard solutions for atomic absorption spectrophotometry. They were divided into two groups. ST group was samples whose donors had no enough curious experience. C group was samples whose donors had general curious experience. The C group was additionally divided into the UC, TC, and M groups. The UC group was samples whose donors left their curiosities untreated. The TC group was samples whose donors completed treatment of their curiosities. The MD group was samples whose donors had both untreated and treated curiosities. Kappa concentration was measured by atomic absorption spectrophotometry. And the Kappa concentration, the C, UC, TC, and MT groups were compared to that in the ST group by students' t-test for equal variance or with his correction for unequal variance. The Kappa levels in the C, UC, and MT groups were significantly higher than that in the ST group. This result suggested that copper level in mixed saliva of children increases when the children had untreated cariocytes. So, additional comparisons were carried out. Please look at the left graph. The left bar shows the copper level in the ST group. The middle bar shows kappa level who had one to five untreated cariosities in the UC group. And the right bar shows kappa level who had six or more untreated cariosities in the UC group. The graph indicated that the kappa level in the saliva of children increased based on the number of their untreated cariocytes. Please look at the right graph. Similar comparison was carried out in the TC group. The left bar shows the kappa level in the TC group. The middle bar shows kappa level who had one to five treated cariosities in the TC group. And the right bar shows kappa level who had six or more treated cariosities in the TC group. No significant difference was found. These results support the suggestion that copper level in the saliva of children increases when the children had untreated cariosity. Second report is a research on the relationship between alumina medication level from deciduous animal in acid surroundings and yellow carous prevalence. 104 extracted deciduous teeth were collected. The teeth were classified depending on the existence or absence of dental caries experience. Teeth without past and current dental caries experience were classified as SD group. Teeth with past or current caries experience were classified as C group. The C group was additionally divided into untreated cariosteeth group and treated cariosteeth group. The two samples were immersed into lactic acid and the condition of pH 5.5 and the temperature of 37 degrees centigrade. And then a duty albumin level for the mid area was compared between the C and the ST groups. Comparisons were carried out by the 
appear the student details for default variance for benefits correction for default variance. Elusive aluminum level in the C group was significantly higher than that in the ST group. So additional comparison was performed between the UC and TC groups. But significant difference wasn't found. These results suggested that aluminum eludes more from career experience keys regardless of treatment. These are conclusions of my presentation. Critical pH of enamel can be changed by ion activity product. In oral food, the ion activity can be considered as ion concentration. Erosion progresses layer by layer from the enamel surface. Initial region of the enamel carriers is found as the subsurface region. The historical difference between the two kinds of demineralized region was induced by existence or absence of biofilm. Copper level in the saliva, which is then increased when they had untreated cariocytes. Amount of aluminum elution from enamel surface by liquid area at pH 5.5 increased when the tooth had passed for current history of enamel carriers. That's all for my presentation. Thank you for your attention. Okay. Okay. It's our following the video presentation from Associate Professor Dr. Koji Watanabe. Thank you for the very nice presentation. We hope the participants uh, to receive the new knowledge or learning from him. Yeah. Do you have any question? Please uh, ask to him directly. Yeah. The participant can ask any question. Okay. I think most. Uh, not necessarily everyone is dentist. No. So maybe yeah. students of uh, department of medicine or pharmacology. Many in many fields, there are many students of many fields, right? Um, uh, all of them in this room, right? Hmm? Yes, uh, almost is uh, then dentistry. Ah, oh, really? Yeah. Dentist, yeah. yeah. Okay. Let's see. Except me. <laughs> <laughs> me, <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> me uh, I'm physical therapist, okay? Oh, <laughs> see. Please. Uh, if uh, have any question? You can send uh, the question in inbox. Uh, also, okay. I think so. The point point of my presentation yeah. is uh, there are two types of uh, demineralized lesion. Mm. One is curious and the other is erosion. And histological features are different because of the existence of or absence okay. of biofilm. That's the point. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. If no uh, question from participant, I will thankful to Professor, uh, Associate Dr. Pro Professor Dr. Koji Watanabe. 
Thank you for very nice knowledge and presentation. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you for you too. Okay.